Hi and welcome. I'm going to share with you today my favorite things about living in Denmark. This is part one of a two-part series where I go through 20 of my favorite things about Denmark. But in this video, I'm going to do just the first 10 in no particular order. Stay tuned. Welcome back. If you're new to my channel, my name is Kelly and I am an American expat living in Denmark. I've now lived in Denmark for three years and so I've kind of gotten over a lot of the culture shock and I have a, a good sense of what it really is that I like about living here. Uh, especially when I go other places, it, it, I, I tend to think about what I miss about Denmark. So let's get started. Number one, I'd say my, one of my favorite things, it's not my most favorite thing, but it's one of them because these are in no order, um, is that they have great public transportation. Um, I lived in a small town at one point in time in the U.S. and you had to have a car if you wanted to leave that town or go anywhere within the town. The town was really small, you could ride your bike, you could walk, uh, but if you wanted to leave the town, there was really no options for you. What I really love about living in a small town in Denmark is that that's not so much the case. You um, have access to maybe a train if you have a train station in your town, but usually there's always a bus line that will go through even the smallest of towns. Um, if you're a small village with a couple um, thousands of people or something, you'll still be able to leave the village uh, even if you don't have your own car. So that's one thing that I really like about Denmark. I also really love taking the train. The train goes throughout the whole country. Um, and so it's not something that's very common. I've, I've never taken a train really in the US. I mean, maybe like a commuter train um, or like a train within a bigger city, but it's, it's different um, what we have here going from maybe the middle of, of Denmark to the south or, or going from east to west or something. So I really like public transportation. Number two, I really like their focus on outdoor education. Um, and I think this is mostly targeted towards the younger children. I have two younger children, um, one of which is in kindergarten. And with his kindergarten class, which is grade zero over here, they have a lot of focus on outside time. So he has a one day a week where they're outside the whole time and they call it forest school because they go in the forest for the most of the time. And this is year round. So it's from the beginning to the end and um, they just have to make sure that they wear the appropriate clothing. And I think that's really nice because I know that the kindergarten my older son went to when we were in the U.S., it's, um, it was a really nice building, really focused on education. I mean, they really learned a lot and he loved his teacher. But they had one time when they went outside to the playground and if it was um, cold or wet out there or, you know, just different reasons, then they wouldn't go out. They would do something inside. And there wasn't really a lot of nature around the school so they could explore. And I think it's a little different because you're so limited in the U.S. because you always have to make sure that everybody's safe and, and you have enough teachers to pay attention to all the children and you get parents' permission. Um, they take them out of school, take them on walks. I don't even know about it. Yeah, I know about the forest school, but my son was saying how that another day of the week, they, they always walk to a different playground. He's outside in nature and I trust the people in his school and it's just really nice because um, I really want them to kind of have a sense of a little bit more of, of learning through experience and not just being so focused on um, sitting in a chair, especially when they're that young. So I really appreciate that. And I know that the daycares here, there are some daycares that are outside daycares and those kids are outside all the time. And they're like nature inspired daycares. I know that they have some of those in the US. Um, I don't think it's as popular, maybe in certain areas, but it's really um, something that they do in Denmark quite a lot. My children didn't go to a nature forest um, daycare, but they did, um, go out a lot at their daycare. I mean, the, the outside playground at their daycare is 
is huge. And, and so that's one thing that I really appreciate about Denmark. They really focus on outdoors and nature. The number three thing that I really like about Denmark is probably the um, bike culture. Um, I know that there are bicycles in pretty much every country. People bike all over the place. But I think when I was in the U.S., it felt like I, I was biking around more so to um, get exercise because when you live in a small town, yeah, maybe you can bike somewhere or we even lived in a, a bigger town later on and there were bike paths and, sing, and sometimes we would just take them just because we wanted a little exercise or maybe some family time. But here in Denmark, people bike everywhere um, and it's part of their daily lives. A lot of people bike to work even. Um, that means that there are a lot of bike paths. The motorists on the road are very mindful of bicycles. And so it's, I feel a little bit safer. Bicycle safety is something that kids uh, get taught in school. So they're really knowledgeable about what to do and, and how to proceed in crosswalks and all these different things. And, and we have just bike, bicycle paths everywhere. And we live in a small town. My husband and I, a few years ago, actually took a bike trip kind of around certain areas of Denmark, and there are marked bike paths um, or bike routes um, in a lot of different places in Denmark. And I really like that, that, um, that it's so popular. I know in bigger cities like Copenhagen, they have these huge bike lanes and lights um, for the stop sign or the, the stop lights for the cars. They have stop lights for the bikes. It's just really interesting and I, I really like that because it it gives people more of, a, of an option because owning a car here is really expensive. Um, but I have always liked riding my bike so it's kind of nice being in a place where it's encouraged. Um, the kids always get these little magnets or these little papers home from school that says ride your bike to school, you know, and so it's, it's a very, uh, very much encouraged thing to do um, here in Denmark. Number four, which is kind of a silly thing, but also goes a little bit with traffic. Um, when it seems like that's been kind of a theme so far, um, is the roundabout. In the U.S. where I lived, I lived in the Midwest, I think we had like two roundabouts in our town of over 200,000 people. Um, and uh, I think a lot of people just didn't use them correctly. I always get this vision of European vacation when Clark Griswold's driving around and he can't get out of the, the roundabout. You know, it's for, for a lot of Americans, it's kind of a nightmare because we're really unsure of what to do. Um, I wouldn't say that everyone here is perfect with it. Maybe it's because there are some people who are new to driving or there are some people who aren't you know, Danish, I don't know, and they're not used to it, but I have come across some other people where they didn't realize what lane they were in, I don't know. But I really like roundabouts because that means that you're not stopping and waiting at a stoplight, which I can't stand stoplights, um, or you're not sitting and waiting at a stop sign. So it just seems that, I don't know, things just kind of work much more smoothly here when it comes to traffic. You don't really see police out monitoring that everybody's doing everything in the correct way. It, it just seems to happen. I know that there are larger roundabouts when you get close to a bigger city where there's two lanes um, and there are signs. So there are always signs that explain what it is that you're supposed to do. But I really like the roundabout. I don't know. It's just something that I've kind of gotten used to. And when I go other places where they don't have them, I keep thinking, hey, they should put a roundabout in here. That would really make things a lot better. Number five um, is location. We live in the middle of the peninsula of Denmark. So we are completely landlocked. But again, I come from the Midwest, so being landlocked is no new thing to me. Um, but because Denmark is so small, you are never really far away from the coast. Maybe it's about an hour and a half drive from where we live, but then we are on the coast. Um, so we can go camping or, you know, we could just go out there for the day to the beach or whatever. So I really like that, that you're never really too far. Um, where we live in the middle, there are some nice lakes and, um, 
you know, that, that's always an option if you want to kind of be around um, water. But I really love that we're not very far from the coast. There are some times in the summer when it gets really warm. Um, that's not, I would say, very common for Denmark and, you know, much of Europe. You tend to get some moderate temperatures where we live. But um, when it's warm, it's really nice to be able just to drive to the coast and spend the day on the beach. Um, so... Yeah. Number six uh, of things that I love about Denmark is that I think that Denmark is a very family-friendly country. Um, there are lots of uh, activities for families, and I wouldn't say that they're just for children or for adults, but I think that they're good for kind of everybody. Um, it's really nice that children are thought of, you know, when you go on a ferry, there's a playground in there. Um, you know, when you do different activities, there, there, there seems to be something for everybody. And I really appreciate that. And I think that the, the Danish mindset of, of, uh, I don't know how children fit into the, their lifestyle or their, their, um, social circles or something, you know, daily lives, how children fit into that, I think is also different. You just get this feeling, you know, when you go somewhere and you're thinking, oh, well, I really want to find something for the kids to do. I, we don't really have to find something. It seems like whatever we do in Denmark is kind of good enough for the children. And Danes are very patient when it comes to children. It's not like, oh my gosh, they brought their children, go away. Um, they're very patient and they're very understanding and they're very open and welcoming of having children around. So you never really kind of feel that um, awkwardness of maybe bringing a child to an adult type of function because uh, unless it's stated, there are plenty of times where people say, oh, well, this is an adult only kind of thing. Um, leave your kids at home. But um, I think that's that's fine to have those types of things. I mean, they have their play dates and birthday parties and things. It doesn't say on the invitation, don't bring your mom, but I know I'm not gonna show up. Number seven of my favorite things of living here, I'd have to say is that I feel that um, life is a little bit more equal here when it comes to gender. Um, I know that there've been a lot of kind of marches and debates and things about gender equality in the United States. And there definitely is a lot of um, division. I don't feel that that is as strong over here in Denmark. I, I think that there's less of, um, I don't know, a feeling of restriction with girl things and boy things. And it's just, here's a job that needs to be done. And we're not looking for there to be a certain person for it. It's just, everybody's the same. Um, in Denmark, there's kind of this, um, it's like an unspoken law that everybody is equal, that nobody is better than anybody else, and that carries over with gender equality. Um, and so I think boys grow up not feeling um, maybe threatened by some things that might be girlish in other places, and then the same thing with girls. Um, it just makes makes you feel that you have a, a, a better you know, chance of 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 being who you want to be and doing the things that you want to do because no one's going to say you can't. Um, I don't know. So maybe that's just my personal opinion. Um, I know that where I grew up, everything was very traditional and there are some traditional roles in the house. You know, my dad worked and my mom was always in the kitchen and, you know, and, and I, we, we don't quite have that here. My husband's the one who likes to do all the cooking. Um, he travels quite a bit, so of course, you know, I cook as well. Um, I mostly bake, but but um, not a job that I'm looked at in society as you should be doing this because you are the wife or you are the mother. And it, I, I think, allows us to have maybe more of a balance in our family because my husband knows that he is just as responsible for our children as, as I am, for example. That leads into number eight. Number eight is that Denmark has um, one year maternity leave. Um, so it's not like in the US where you get weeks and then you have to go back to work. Otherwise you could be 
um, at risk of losing your job. I remember um, I had both my children in the U.S., so this really doesn't apply to me, but I think it kind of goes along with the equality and, and the value that they have on family life. But I know in the U.S., um, I think the year after I had my son, I, I had an evaluation at my job, and they said, oh, well, we noticed that last year you took this amount of days off. And I said, well, I had a baby. And, you know, I mean, it was... That, that didn't really seem to change their mindset. Like, yeah, but you still took time off. You know, it's, it's always kind of a whammy to take time off work. But here in Denmark, you get a year to, to take off with your maternity. You can, of course, come back earlier if you want to. You can also share this time with your partner. Um, and so, for example, your husband can also get a paternity leave. And that means that encouraged by the Danish cultural society that they want the fathers to have that strong connection with their children just as much as the mothers because they're both parents so it's parent leave you know and getting to know your child and I really like that um, so even though it really does not pertain to me at all I am not gonna have any more children so I won't be able to take advantage of that here but I really do like that. That's just one thing that I like. I, I like how they say, well, you know what? It's important for you not to rush back to work and, and for you to take time. And yes, you're going to be losing sleep and you're going to be tired and you're going to need some extra downtime to, to kind of deal with all these changes. And I really appreciate their, their approach to that. Number nine might be kind of a vanity thing. I don't know, but I really like the Danish furniture. I didn't really pay so much attention to furniture in the U.S., but here in Denmark, they have a lot of different Danish designers. And some of the furniture that they have here is just really interesting. Um, I never really thought I would be someone who cared about that. I remember we were in the U.S. and we were looking for a rocker recliner because I was getting so tired of breastfeeding in this really uncomfortable chair and then falling asleep, you know, or, or, you know, or just, I don't know, and getting so tense and saying, oh my gosh, this is, this is horrible. Um, and I thought, I want to rock a recliner. I want to be, you know, in something a little bit more comfortable. And we went and we got, I swear it's like the biggest chair you could, <laughs> you could find, you know, made out of leather and whatever. And it was really nice. And I really wish we would have been able to get another one. But, um, so we went and got that chair and as we were shopping this, it was kind of like a nice furniture kind of, you know, it had different little speckles of like designy things. And I say designy because I have no idea what brand rock recliner that was still have no idea. Um, because I, I didn't care about those things, but they had some Danish style chairs that my husband said, Oh, those are, those look great. I'm like, eh. You know, and I don't know, I guess it's just a different peace of mind. You know, you're, you're used to like lazy boys and things like that. And this, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's very uh, different when you, different styles when you think about furniture. The tables and the cabinets here are just so beautiful. I'm going to be doing a video um, soon that has to do with what I put in my dish cabinet because I'm a dish cabinet. I mean, what? Maybe there are a lot of people in the U.S. have dish cabinets, but mine is, is like filled with, I don't know, like specialty dishes. I feel really grown up, but um, that's a difference of, of how my life has changed since moving to Denmark. And you'll get to see that beautiful cabinet um, in another video. Um, I've also got a, a board on my Pinterest page. So if you find me on Pinterest, you can see a lot of different examples for different tables and lamps. And it's just, it's just really interesting. I mean, it's one thing that the Danes are really focused on. Oh, is that a such and such? And, and it, these are just regular people who know about all these Danish styles. They're not professional antique shoppers or design majors in colleges or something like that. But they all seem to know this. And, you know, you move here and you're like, who? You know, I don't know any of this stuff, but it's really kind of interesting. So, you know, you should check it out. Okay, and this comes to my number 10 thing that I love about Denmark. And remember that there's a whole other video with 11 through 20. So be sure to check that out because... 
It doesn't stop here. There are tons of things that I really love about living here. Um, but number 10, the thing that I love about Denmark is I love that they have a proper spring. Again, I come from the Midwest. I felt that all the time in the US that we went straight from a really long, cold winter and then all of a sudden you're wearing t-shirt and, and jeans around, no coat. And it's like, oh wow, you know. Um, that doesn't quite happen often in Denmark. We actually have a proper spring. And so it's March right now and there are some beautiful flowers outside. Um, we have a lot of spring flowers in our yard, which I'm really appreciative of. We have these beautiful flowers that start blooming. And I mean, I've even had some that were blooming in February because we have such kind of a, a moderate temperature here. But, um, but March, April, May, I have lots and lots of, of flowers blooming. Uh, I swear the whole month of May is just like the best time to be in Denmark if you want to see flowers. So I'm going to show you uh, some of the flowers that I actually have right now out in my yard. Some that are almost about to bloom, my daffodils, so I'm really excited though. I have small daffodils and large daffodils. It's just crazy. Um, but here's a look at what I have in my garden right now. Those are the first 10 of 20 things that I love about Denmark. Um, be sure to check out my other video where I talk about things 11 through 20, which again, in no particular order of what I love about Denmark. And do you live in a new place? What do you love about your new place? Have you been to Denmark? What is it that you love about Denmark? Um, is there something that you learned about Denmark through this video? Give me some of your questions and comments below, and I'd love to read them. I'd love to answer them. Thanks for watching. If you like this video and like learning a little bit more about my experiences here in Denmark, be sure to like down below this video and subscribe to my channel where you'll get more videos on what expat life in Denmark is like, and maybe also a little sneak peek at some of the places that we go um, here and also um, around in Europe. Take care.